This is like the most terrifying I've ever seen her garbage bin. It's just full of broken glass shards. Mm. Hey everyone, it's Wendy and this is a series called Wendy Tries. It is a series where I attempt crafts that are different than the usual sewing and DIY that I do. We are going to be cutting glass, specifically mirrors. I have two mirrors in our home, this is one of them, that have rectangular corners and I would love for it to have a bit more of a rounded edge, kind of like that Parisian style mirror or like those pebble mirrors that are so cute on Instagram. I have watched many YouTube videos, I have bought all the supplies, I have prayed, and I still am scared. First, as a warm up, I'm gonna tackle the tall mirror that's by our entrance. My goal is for it to have a bit more of a arched top. And this mirror is no joke. It is six millimeters thick. Very few of the YouTube videos I watched were dealing with this thickness of glass. So let's get started. To give this a try, these are the supplies that you'll need. Glass cutter oil, I bought this bottle on Amazon. A rotary sanding tool, in my case it's a Dremel with a sanding head. You'll need a variety of sandpaper ranging in grit from 80 to about 200. Mirror spray paint. Molding onlay, in my case I have two corners and one centerpiece. Protection in the form of breathing mask and work gloves, as well as preferably good ventilation. A pencil style glass cutter, mine came with a dropper for oil as well as a separate head for thicker glass. And a circular glass cutter. Yes, that glass cutter from those spy breaking films. But hopefully not this outcome. My research told me to work on a flat, shock absorbent surface, so I migrated my tall mirror to our dining table and I had a thick Pilates mat underneath. Next, I opened all of my tools and I marked the center of the mirror to be the peak of the arch. When migrating the mirror, I discovered this stamp on the back, which I will get back to later in this video. Very interesting. Okay, I'm nervous. I recently found an art restoration channel on YouTube that is so satisfying. I will link it in the description. As much as I would love to walk you through this with similar ease and expertise, I spent a lot of time just hyping myself up and then walking away and then doing that again. Oh yeah, I forgot to clean the glass. I'm so nervous. <laughs> on all the tutorials I've watched, they just cut a circle out of the mid- they never- That's the problem. I know! That's what I'm worried about right now. After a lot of deliberating with Dan, imagining all sorts of worst case scenarios, putting on shoes to protect myself from those worst case scenarios, I positioned the cutter, added oil, and then completely messed up my first attempt. Oh shoot. You went too far. Yeah. Also, why is it so close? Oh my gosh, it's not even in tight. I messed this up royally. Let's try that again. Clean the surface, reposition the circle cutter, take a deep breath. It's time. The next step in the online videos was to move the mirror so that the scored line would hang over the edge of the table. This creates enough tension so that when you strike the mirror from below at the score line, the glass will crack exactly where the score has weakened it. Dan and I practiced our crack and snap on that first score that I drew. It does shatter. It shatters. After that, I moved on to the real score line. Once 95% of the arch was cracked, my research told me to separate the waste glass into pieces with the pencil cutter. The pencil score should start very close, but not on the curved score, or else you could crack through the curved edge. It's that kind of advice that makes you unsure if you are more or less confident after watching a tutorial, but here I am, trying to make my crack and snap dreams come true. Oh my gosh, okay, all right. So shoes was definitely a good idea. It's all looking decent. Just like a little bit bumpy. 
I'm about to sand this with a 60 grit sandpaper. We've been doing it wet so that it reduces the amount of dust flying in the air. I've also taken some inspiration from the world of dentistry where one of us sands and the other one holds the vacuum nearby, just like dentist, dental hygienist dynamic. Honestly, it worked really great. Flipping the mirror over reminded us of that West Germany stamp, which combined with how we've been calling this a mercury glass mirror and that we have been cutting and sanding it in our own home led us to become seriously concerned that we have been poisoning ourselves with mercury dust this entire time. Mercury was originally used to provide the reflective coating for mirrors, okay, produced around 1840 until at least 1930 in Bohemia, Germany, and England. End of West Germany. The 3rd of October, 1990. Well, this is not looking good. Mercury silvering. An amalgam of mercury and the precious metal is applied to the object, heated, vaporizing most of the mercury. Dangerous since mercury is highly toxic. Great. How to tell mercury glass mirror. The mirror must be directly lit. If it sparkles, it is undoubtedly a mercury mirror. Woo! I've never been more excited about something not sparkling. So great news, I don't think I'm being poisoned by my DIY project. Time to put my extensive one day glass cutting experience to the test on mirror number two. Instead of an arch, the goal is to round two adjacent corners. With the same circle cutter, I scored a 90 degree rotation on the first corner, and then I did the same 90 degree rotation on the neighboring corner. This next part is definitely the part that I hated the most, but I'm sliding the mirror so that the edges that are going to become rounded are hanging off of the table. This is to create a little bit of tension across the glass so that when I strike the bottom along the curved edge, the glass will crack in exactly the place that I have scored, not above, not below, not shattering into a million pieces. For sanding, the rotary tool worked well, but it was a bit stressful because small glass bits would just fly off unannounced. I did really like the dental hygienist vacuum approach that we did with the first mirror, so I tried to keep the vacuum close using clamps or even just holding it between my knees. To make the mirror smooth to the touch, we worked our way from 80 grit to about 150 grit. You can also wet the sandpaper to tame the glass dust a little bit. And for the bits of reflective backing that came off, we gave all of the rounded edges at least six coats of mirror spray paint. This is like the most terrifying I've ever seen her garbage bin. It's just full of broken glass shards. But anyways, these are the untouched corners and these are the two that we have rounded. The back sides have been sprayed down with the mirror spray and that just helps to clean up any places where the mirror backing popped off in the sanding process. And they aren't perfect, I will admit. If you look really close, you can see the places where we had challenges, but for using home-friendly tools, I'm pretty pleased with the outcome. The finishing touch to really get the Parisian inspired look, which also doubles as a backup plan in case you have some mistakes that you want to cover up, is to go buy some good old molding pieces. This one's like a big centerpiece. It's gonna go at the top. And these are the two little corners. I got these online and they came from the same company, which I personally believe helps them a lot to look like they match and belong together in terms of the little intricate details of the molding. I'm kind of tempted to keep all of these plain white because something kind of nice about them but in the interest of really reaching for the Parisian gold mirror I will spray paint them gold because we can't go outside this is one of the techniques I've been doing to manage spray painting indoors we take a big box or some kind of bag put the spray paint items inside and then I turn on the kitchen fan to full blast and I spray I don't know if this is like the best idea but it's certainly better than spray painting anywhere closer to our bedroom After they're spray painted, I just let them dry and then I can affix them to the mirror using a little bit of E6000. Okay everyone, here is how the two mirrors looked before in all their rectangularness. And here is how they turned out. I put off this project for so long and I could not be happier with how it turned out. Some of you might recognize the square mirror if you know where it came from. Tell me in the comments. 
If you're inspired by this adventure and you decide to cut your own mirrors or glass, do remember to use hashtag made with Wendy so I can find your outcome and support the hard work that you put into it. You probably saw from the close-ups that the curved edges are not totally perfect, but from a safe distance, a social distance, I'm happy. She's looking good. Check the link in the description to see more Wendy Tries videos, as well as links to all the products that I purchased in case you want to benefit from my glass cutting research. And if you want to see more of my videos, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell notification, find me on Instagram, at with Wendy. There will be more pictures of this mirror and that mirror is over there. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.